So, folks, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about motors. Uh, and in order to do so, we're going to need to talk first about how DC mo simple DC motors work, um, a little bit about electromagnetism, and then we're going to talk about uh, this, uh, this thing right here. Um, which is something called a MOSFET. And th there's a reason why this is in there um, that I'll explain in a, minute, a few minutes, but it's really important that you include this or a transistor in anything that you're doing with a uh, high current, high voltage device like a motor. So uh, a DC motor is, um, you know, this is an example of one. It's uh, this is like an inexpensive hobby motor. It spins around in both directions, um, and it's got two leads coming out of it. Power, you know, they're color coded here, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, this uh, this site here do, has a pretty good illustration of how uh, a motor operates in these lines. So when we apply current across uh, the two terminals on our motor, what we're actually doing is we're creating uh, an electromagnetic charge. There's a coiled wire inside of there that when you pass electricity through it, it becomes magnetized. And that uh, that's connected to uh, the shaft here, the thing that spins around. And then inside are the motor are also these other magnets with north and south polarity on them. And so as the this coil here becomes magnetized it is both pulled and repulsed uh, by these magnets which causes it to spin around so when we apply current through the leads of the motor it causes it to spin in one direction um, now i'll talk about how to spin in two directions in uh in, in a future video but Right now, we're just going to start out with the basics of getting this thing to move in one direction. So when we apply uh, power, this is going to spin around, and it's going to do it really fast. Um, I'm not including any way of sort of controlling the speed at this point in time. This is more of just a demonstration of how to get this thing working. The next video will show you how to actually uh, control speed. So uh, we've got our, um, our motor here. Now, we can't hook this up directly to a microcontroller. Uh, instead, what we want to do is we want to use a component like this. Uh, this is something called a MOSFET. Uh, and a MOSFET is an acronym for um, a, uh, oh, geez, what is this thing called? <laughs> it's a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So it's a kind of transistor, and it's a little bit different than the kind of transistors that, uh, that than most kinds of transistors. This one operates off of uh, a change in voltage, whereas other transistors will operate off of a change in current. And so these, uh, in many ways, act as digital switches. So when we apply uh, current to one pin on here, it actually closes the connection between the other two. So it's uh, you can think this is also oftentimes called like a solid state switch. Um, so there's no physical things going on here, but it still has the same functionality as a switch. Uh, the reason that we're using this is because motors are when they when they first need to overcome inertia, there's a really big current draw, and our microcontrollers can only provide a little bit of current on their pins, and usually the amount that a motor will need will uh, surpass that. So if you were to plug your microcontroller in, even if your motor ran off of five volts, uh, if you tried to start a motor or vary its speed or slow it down or something like that, there's a really good chance that you'd pull too much current through your uh, microcontroller pin and damage it. So we use this to protect the microcontroller, even if we're operating at the same voltage. Now, there are other instances where you might be using this and it's operating at a higher voltage so maybe you've got um, a, a motor or you know maybe like an led strip or something that operates at 12 volts or 24 volts uh, or even 9 volts right any one of these you wouldn't be able to power directly from microcontroller pins because they only put out uh, 5 or 3.3 .3 volts so this allows us to switch with a higher 
current higher power supply. Uh, there are three pins on here. Um, I'll show you the data sheet for this particular one that I'm using. This is an IRL B8721. Now, there, there are many different kinds of these things. You can poke around and find various examples online. Um, there's a regular transistor that I've used a lot called a TIP120, which is really popular. Um, you know, these uh, FETs are nice just because they do work off of voltage, so you don't have to worry about current. Um, also, they can generally handle, handle uh, at least to my understanding, they can handle a little bit more um, uh, amperage passing through them so that they're, they're good for, for using with things like motors. So um, these pins have specific names. There's the gate, the drain, and the source. And the way that this works is the source uh, is connected to the ground of your power supply. Uh, and this is your a high voltage, high current power supply, not, not necessarily your microcontroller's power supply, at least not directly, um, or alone, I should say. Uh, the, the, the gate uh, out here, this pin is the one that connects to your microcontroller. And so closing the, so applying voltage on the gate, basically what it does is it connects this switch and the drain, which is that center pin, and the, and the drain is what will connect to your motor. So uh, if you're using uh, something like a TIP120, something that's not a MOSFET, these pins are called base collector and emitter. It's always worthwhile doing a little bit of research to figure out what you're working with and know how it's wired up so you don't wind up accidentally damaging something. So in this case, anyhow, we've got our gate, our drain, our source, um, the gate is connected to the microcontroller. On here, I've got it on pin 11 on my actual microcontroller setup. I've got it on pin 3. Um, the source is connected to uh, an external power supply, and then the drain is connected to the motor itself. So if we look at this uh, illustration here for a moment, we can see how this is set up. And there's something really important here to, to point out to you. So um, the, we've got our, we've got a pin right here, and this is going to basically, when we turn voltage on, when we turn this high, it's going to turn the motor on. And when we turn it low, it's going to turn the motor off. That should be pretty straightforward, uh, and you should have a clear mental model of this already. What's different is in this wiring down here. So this is uh, represents my external power supply. I'm using a 5-volt, 4-amp power supply. That's plenty of juice to get this thing running. Um, Usually motors, you'll want to provide, uh, they'll be able to run off of uh, half of their uh, their idealized current up to one and a half times over. So if you've got a, a motor that its peak functionality is 5 volts, it'll start to work at 2.5 volts. And then it'll, you know, it, you can kind of overclock it, if you will, up to 7.5 volts. But beyond that, you'll start to damage it. Um, so... Uh, in this case, I, I'm using um, a 5-volt power supply with 4 amps, and that's more than enough to overcome any sort of like inertia that I might encounter here. Now, you notice I don't have the breadboard, the microcontroller power supply connected anywhere inside of the breadboard. I do, however, have ground connected. And I've got ground connected here, and I've got ground connected off of my external power supply, and both of these connect into the FET. Now, we need to have a shared and common ground between all components. I'm not connecting the power to the microcontroller. I'm only I'm only sharing that ground line. This is really important to remember. Otherwise, you're going to get unexpected results. Things aren't going to work the way you think they are. Uh, the power here, I'm just plugging in directly to the motor. So power goes to the motor. Ground uh, goes is shared between the microcontroller, the power supply, and then connects to the FET. And then the, the, the other lead of the motor connects the FET as well. And what we're doing is we're closing, when we apply voltage on here, on this pin, we actually close a switch between internal to this, we close a switch between these two. So that's how we make the connection. Make note of how you wire this up. Ground is what connects to the FET, not power, right? Um, you'll damage it if you uh, do it otherwise. Now, there are some that are wired up differently. Always a good thing to check. This is something that's called an N-channel MOSFET. 
um, source source is connected to ground. So uh, I'm just going to move this back down over here. And you can see uh, in my circuit here, it's a bit of a mess of wires, but I've got pin three right here connected to the FET. Uh, I've got shared ground. Let me move this out of the way. I've got, uh, this might kind of plug into my external power supply. You can see I've got ground. Uh, I've got ground from the microcontroller here. And then this is the ground that's connected to the FET. All right. And then the power from the motor is connected directly to the power from the uh, power supply. And then the ground for the motor is connected to the FET as well. All right. So it's the the circuit's not terribly complex. The code is also not terribly complex, but you do really want to make sure you you know how everything's wired up inside of here. So the code uh, here we've got a variable to hold the motor pin. Uh, I've got it on pin three. I'm using the uh, the built-in LED as just another signal to know that the uh, that the motor is going to be turning on. Um, so I set both of these pins as outputs, and then in the loop, what I'm doing is I'm just saying, turn the motor pin high, wait for a second, and then turn the motor pin off and wait for five seconds. Um, one of the reasons that I did this is because I noticed that the inertially this motor takes a, a little while to spin down. So it'll start up really quick, but then it takes a little while even after I cut the power for it to stop moving, even with uh, no load on here. So this is it for the code. It's really simple and straightforward. I'm going to plug this in here and you'll see when that light turns on, uh, this will start to spin. Oh, I seem to have lost my camera. Sorry about that. So something funny was going on with my camera there. Uh, but now you can see uh, every time that this turns on and starts, it like jerks the motor around. Right. Uh, and then if I just move that a little bit so it doesn't, you can see the, uh, you can see the, sh the tips on the shaft spinning. I think they just become a big blur on the camera. If I zoom in. Yeah, so zoomed in here, you can see when it twitches. How that just sort of spins around there like that. So obviously this is uh, a big mess of a breadboard right now. Um, the the next uh, <laughs> the, the the next video that I'm going to do will show you how to control the speed of the motor, and then after that I'll show you how you can reverse uh, direction so it'll go back and forth.